question is, we have seen, of course, the condemnation of Russia's actions at the UN today, but we've also seen Putin doubling down. How should Europe respond here? By staying the course, uh, we have been uh, very forceful uh, in terms of uh, making the case for imposing uh, draconian sanctions upon Russia. We know these sanctions uh, work, but they need uh, time to impose uh, real hardship uh, upon the Russian economy. And in the meantime, of course, what we need to do, ESA, is to make sure that we protect uh, our uh, populations, our businesses, our households from the rising costs of energy. Uh, as Russia has made it a point to weaponize uh, natural gas, uh, the price of which uh, has skyrocketed uh, and uh, has serious implications uh, in terms of the cost of energy for the entire European uh, continent. Yeah, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, but we are expecting to hear of, a, of another round of sanctions, an eighth package, I think, is uh, of sanctions from the EU. Can you give us any details of what that will include? Will it include a plan to cap Russian oil, Minister? Um, I'm not uh, ready to comment on the eighth package of, uh, uh, of sanctions because we're uh, not there yet. Uh, mm. Of course, it's a topic that is being discussed uh, currently at the, at the technical level until it is actually presented um, um, uh, to the European uh, Council. But uh, what I can tell you, he says that the seven packages that we have already put in place uh, constitute uh, a very, very uh, significant intervention in terms of imposing uh, um, significant hardship upon uh, Russia. Uh, but as I, as I told you, we need to be certain mm. that we stay the course. We need to maintain the cohesion uh, of European societies um, um, uh, ahead of a very difficult um, winter. And frankly, we need to also be more uh, aggressive uh, in containing uh, uh, the impact from the rising uh, cost of gas. Uh, Greece has been at the forefront uh, of lobbying. Uh, for a cap uh, on all the gas that is currently traded uh, in Europe, not just the Russian uh, gas. I think this proposal is gaining uh, more traction and we're also looking forward to more specific recommendations by the Commission on how we can um, confront uh, this weaponization of gas uh, uh, by Russia. I know you can't tell me what is in the package. Can you tell me what you think ought to be in this next round of sanctions? I mean, and are all 27 nations here on board? I'm thinking here of Hungary. Uh, well, I can't speak for Hungary, but um, uh, certainly we need all um, uh, countries on, uh, on board. It's no secret that uh, Hungary has voiced uh, significant concerns about adding to the, to the existing package. What I, what I can tell you is we want to make sure that uh, whatever sanctions, uh, additional sanctions we impose uh, on, on Russia should hurt the Russian uh, economy more than they hurt the European economy. So there is a menu uh, of options uh, on the table. But it's not like um, we, we have, um, you know, uh, um, tons of options that we have uh, currently not, uh, not explored. I think most of the mm -hmm. sanctions that one can contemplate have already been imposed. Let's talk about really the impact that this is having on Europe and the cost, obviously, of the energy prices that you were talking about there, Minister. What impact has this had on Greece? Well, I think um, all European countries have been struggling with the fact yeah. uh, that the cost of uh, energy, primarily the cost of gas, has skyrocketed. And of course, uh, as you know, there is a direct transmission of the cost of gas into the price of electricity. So we had to, we had essentially to deal with, with with a double problem. What we've done in in Greece, and I think we've been pioneers at the European level, is to put in place a rather sophisticated mechanism uh, which essentially captures the windfall profits uh, of the electricity producers at the source. Uh, then we direct those profits into uh, a special solidarity fund in order to help us uh, subsidize the prices uh, of electricity and also natural gas. Uh, so we've told uh, our people that they will be paying more for energy, but uh, we are trying to absorb as much as we can uh, in order to make sure that the increases in the cost of, uh, uh, of energy um, in light of what is going to be a difficult winter uh, are not going to be uh, exorbitant. Uh, this is uh, uh, the logic that the European Union is also uh, adopting. So I think they've looked at what we've done uh, in Greece. Uh, we have proven that this uh, method actually works. So every single day we're actually capturing millions and millions of windfall profits and directing them towards this uh, subsidy scheme. And I think that the European Union is rec going to recommend that all European countries use a, uh, a similar uh, arrangement. So this is a first line uh, of defense to, to ensure that we make a market intervention, mm. which in my mind is absolutely necessary when we deal with these extraordinary situations. 
And as you were talking, Prime Minister, we were seeing some of the images of the Greek Parliament, I think it was, and different municipalities that have had their lights turned off. Is this something that you will continue doing? Well, uh, I mean, we all, uh, at the same time, we all need to be sure that we need to consume, uh, to, to conserve as much energy as, as possible. Uh, and that is why, uh, in our subsidy scheme, we actually reward people uh, in case they reduce their electricity consumption by 15 percent. So it is important to send the signal that we all need to team up uh, in this effort. Uh, the government is going to do its part, but we also all need to see how we can uh, reduce as much as we can um, the consumption uh, of, energy, uh, of um, uh, energy, the consumption of electricity, uh, the consumption of gas. Uh, there mm -hmm. will be interventions also when it comes to essentially paying businesses for not producing, uh, that is not um, um, uh, consuming gas. So we're talking about a concerted uh, effort to make sure that uh, Putin's effort to weaponize uh, uh, gas uh, and to impose uh, unnecessary pain upon European society actually fails. And we have seen uh, unity within EU vis-à-vis uh, -vis the war in Ukraine. We have also seen not just surging gas prices, but also a cost of living crisis. So how much appetite, Prime Minister, is there at home to continue supporting uh, the war financially, given, of course, the financial challenges here? Well, um, uh, it's the cost of uh, energy that has um, uh, driven um, uh, global inflation, Isa. So this is, this is a real um, uh, problem, uh, and that is why uh, in Greece, on top of what we do uh, on the energy front, uh, we've also uh, announced a support uh, package for more vulnerable households to help them with the cost uh, of living crisis uh, in general. We are in a position to do that because the Greek uh, economy has performed extremely uh, well uh, over the past year. I expect growth in, in Greece to exceed uh, 5 percent, and this is giving us uh, mm. uh, the budgetary space to be able to support uh, more vulnerable uh, households. But, uh, of course, uh, we constantly need to make the case of why uh, we need to support um, uh, Ukraine and why uh, we cannot um, essentially compromise uh, with the Russian um, uh, blackmail, because we need to send a signal that this is not just about Ukraine. This is about any authoritarian leader who thinks that the borders can be changed uh, by force. Uh, so there is, I think, a broader message to be communicated by the international community when it comes to standing up uh, with Ukraine against Russia in this unjust war. Um, Prime Minister, I want to move away, if I can, from energy and focus, really, on accusations being made by Turkey, accusations of crimes against humanity, on the question of migrants. Your response here? I mean, this is a, a completely preposterous claim, Isa. Uh, Greece has saved tens of thousands uh, of people at sea. Just today, uh, we actually had two shipwrecks. We, we saved more than 100 uh, people, um, uh, amongst them uh, many, uh, many children. So to accuse uh, Greece uh, of crimes against humanity, and this accusation actually coming from a country that has a track record of weaponizing um, uh, migrants for political purposes, is completely absurd. I should remind you and your viewers what happened um, uh, uh, one and a half year ago in March 2020. Uh, when President Erdogan openly encouraged tens of thousands of desperate people to cross uh, into Europe, uh, to, uh, into Greece and into Europe, uh, in order to put pressure uh, upon the European Union. Uh, so it's not uh, us who have been weaponizing um, uh, migrants for political purposes. We have an obligation uh, to protect and defend our borders, but with full respect uh, um, uh, to um, uh, fundamental uh, rights. Uh, and yeah. uh, every time there's a single person who is at need uh, uh, of, uh, of, of being saved at sea, our Coast Guard has stepped up. And as I told you, even today we, we rescued more than 100 um, uh, people uh, at sea. So it is a complete reversal uh, uh, of reality. And I'm, I'm, I'm really disappointed uh, at this uh, sort of constant war um, uh, of, uh, mm. uh, of fake news. We should be able to sit down with Turkey and discuss uh, as civilized neighbors and, not, uh, uh, and cooperate on migration. I've been the first um, uh, who has said that Turkey has an important role to play uh, when managing the migration uh, um, uh, crisis. But this is certainly no way um, uh, to uh, sort of to conduct uh, uh, international affairs on the, uh, on the part of Turkey. But, Prime Minister, why would, just help us understand, why would Turkey or President Erdogan do this? Why, w what does Turkey get from these comments? Um, look, um, I'm in no position um, uh, to... 
uh, to know what uh, President Erdogan um, uh, thinks uh, and whether this is, uh, uh, you know, simply uh, a, a, a domestic um, uh, play. Uh, but what I can tell you is that uh, over the past months we've seen a crescendo of Turkish uh, rhetoric uh, directed, primarily directed against uh, uh, Greece with completely baseless, preposterous uh, allegations challenging uh, the sovereignty uh, of Greek islands. Uh, we've said very, very clearly that this uh, pattern of rhetoric is, uh, is unacceptable. Uh, there's only one playbook uh, for uh, uh, solving uh, differences uh, uh, among states, and that is a strict adherence to international law, and in our case, to the law, adherence to the law uh, of the seas. And we constantly encourage Turkey to, to sit down and discuss based on those principles. I mean, after all, we are neighbors, uh, and we need to find a way to resolve our disputes uh, in, a, uh, in a civilized uh, manner. Greek Prime Minister Kriakos Mitsotakis appreciates uh, taking the time to speak to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shaisa.